Good morning. Pastor Sean here on Tuesday, April 6th with your morning prayer. So let us begin. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. O come, let us worship him. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hand formed the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. O come, let us worship him. Our text for today is Hebrews chapter 10, verses 1 through 18. For since the law has but a shadow of the good things to come, instead of the true form of these realities, it can never, by the same sacrifices that are continually offered every year, make perfect those who draw near. Otherwise would they not have ceased to be offered, since the worshippers, having once been cleansed, would no longer have any consciousness of sin. But in these sacrifices there is a reminder of sin every year, for it is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. Consequently, when Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifices and offerings you have not desired, but a body you have prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sin offerings you have taken no pleasure. Then I said, Behold, I have come to do your will, O God, as it is written of me in the scroll of the book. When he said above, uh, when he said above, you have neither desired nor taken pleasure in sacrifices and offerings and burnt offerings and sin offerings, these are offered according to the law. Then he added, Behold, I have come to do your will. He abolishes the first in order to establish the second. And by that uh, will we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. And every priest stands daily at his service, offering repeatedly the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. But when Christ had offered for all time a single sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God, waiting from that time until his enemy should be made a footstool before his feet. For by a single offering he has perfected for all time those who are being sanctified. And the Holy Spirit also bears witness to us, for uh, after saying, This is the covenant that I will make with them, after those days, declares the Lord, I will put my laws on their hearts and write them on their minds. Then he adds, I will remember their sins and their lawless deeds no more. Where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer off any offering for sin. In many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets, but now in these last days, he's spoken to us by his son. All right. Um, so again, this continued uh, discussion about, um, about how the old system of sacrifices was insufficient, how the blood of bulls and goats could never um, take away sins. So it is only through Christ's perfect sacrifice that our sins were removed from us. And, um, you know, I've, I've been mentioning how this is for, um, kind of aimed at, uh, Jewish Christians who were considering going back to Judaism. And so oftentimes when you're going through Hebrews, you can, you know, it, it deals with concepts that are very foreign to, um, to, to people who've been Christian their whole lives, who have no, you know, history <laughs> in, in Judaism. So a lot of this stuff kind of tends to kind of go right over. But the cool thing uh, for us, uh, who have been Christian our whole lives, and and might have some difficulties just kind of having this kind of hit the way it was intended to hit the original audience, is to kind of see how um, what this says to us about our worship, because um, you know the what they're talking about is kind of um, the the heart and core of the worship life of the people of Israel. And, and the Jewish people of that time is it, it came down to the, the sacrifices, you know, the sacrifice of the temple, the atoning sacrifices that uh, pointed to the promise of forgiveness of sins. You know, that was the, the heart of it. And uh, so, you know, we look at to the heart of our worship and how do we regard worship in the first place? And that's, that's a great discussion that, I mean, uh, definitely longer than what we have this morning, but just in general, how um, oftentimes, and a lot of Christianity will look at worship 
in terms of it is an activity that we perform or that we are doing for God. You know, it's kind of like this, this idea that, um, you know, we bring our, because we're just like the, the old sacrificial system, they would bring the bulls, they would bring the goats, they would bring the sacrifices uh, to be offered. And so there was this, um, this component of it. So we, we, with, we look at our worship and say, well, what do we bring to worship? Well, we bring our, our, our sacrifice of thanksgiving. We, we bring our sacrifice of praise. And, and so we tend to look at um, worship as something that we are doing to bring to God. You know, we sacrifice of our offerings, you know, all these ways that we bring God the very best that we have um, to worship him. And the, the fascinating thing that we have here is that it's, it's kind of fighting against that temptation because, um, you know, he's saying like the, the old system where you bring your sacrifices and hoping that those are good enough to God or for God, um, that was never sufficient. And in fact, um, you know, what it references scripture here that says sacrifices and offerings you've not desired. Burnt offerings and sinner offerings, you take no pleasure that God does not desire these sacrifices. God doesn't, takes no pleasure in, in the offerings and, and, and whatever we make. And, um, because the point is, you know, these things, it's, well, the idea that we, um, in this old system, that we're, they're bringing sacrifices to him to, to appease him, to atone for their sin, um, you know, it, it could only ever point ahead to Christ because, you know, first of all, what does God need with that stuff? I mean, he doesn't need us to bring him anything. He's God. But just the, the idea that, um, you know, we're trying to make him happy by bringing him this stuff when we have just wounded him so grievously with our sin. Um, and he's not happy about this. It's not like he, he happily set up the sacrificial system. I mean, it's not like Adam and Eve sinned and he's like, oh, okay, well, here, I'm going to put this together. And like, this is great. No, this is, he's not happy <laughs> with, with our sin. He's not happy with the way, the state of affairs that we have brought upon ourselves. Um, so this whole kind of concept of us bringing things to God is not what makes him happy, is not what he desires, but rather what does he desire? He desires to send his son, his perfect son, to be our once for all sacrifice, to be the one to initiate this new covenant that is not based on our um, uh, performance of the law, our perfect keeping of the law, but based on the forgiveness of sins through his sacrifice. And so now, um, you know, like in the end of our verse 17, I will remember their sins and their lawless deeds no more. That is what Christ initiates, that God forgets, you know, our sin and our lawless deeds and looks upon us as his beloved children. And so now this is what makes him happy. So our worship is not us coming and delivering to God. It is us coming and receiving from God, God delivering God saying, here is what I bring to you to make you acceptable to me, to make you into my beloved child, not what you are offering to prove or show me that you are. Because God is the one who proves it to us by sending his son, by saying, by pointing to Jesus and saying, that, that is what I'm bringing you into. That is who you are inside. <laughs> that is what I see when I look into your heart. And uh, so this is a, a nice, nice little text that uh, tries to, for, for us at least, can reorient our, our view of worship and uh, where, we're, where we're coming in at it with. So, all right. Well, let us pray. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all of our doings being ordered by your governance may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Up top by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, 
and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless and preserve you. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me today. Hope this is a blessing to you. And hope you have a great Tuesday. So, peace be with you.